I'm very excited now because I have come to what is literally one of the wonders of the industrial world, the SS Great Britain. Built in 1843, the masterpiece of the world's greatest engineer, Eisenbard Kingdom Brunel. This was the largest ship in the world at the time. It was the most innovative and advanced, designed to carry people across the Atlantic at record speed. This is the grandparent of every modern ocean-going ship in the world. What I like about the museum here and the team is that they've preserved the hull as it was found in the 1970s in the Falkland Islands. They haven't given it a new lick of paint. And it's being protected by this atmospherically controlled environment. There's big dehumidifiers sucking water out of this area, and it's as dry down here as it would be in the deserts of Arizona. And this hull, you get a sense of the experience and the age of the ship. It's been around the world over 30 times. It's done a million miles at sea. It's 175 years old. It's one of the most special ships in the long history of mankind's engagement with the sea. It wasn't just the fact that this ship was made of iron that made it so innovative. It was also the way that it was propelled through the water in a new, efficient, and brilliant way. Let's come and have a look at the stern. Until this point, steamships had been driven through the water by big paddle wheels on either side of the hull. But Brunel insisted on using a brand new piece of technology at the time, meaning this is one of the first ships in the world to use a propeller, a far more efficient way of driving the ship through the water. And efficiency meant cheaper and faster. Up to that point in history, ships could take weeks and weeks to cross the Atlantic, and they were very much at the mercy of the weather. Now, the Great Britain could cross the Atlantic, driven by this propeller, at a steady 12 knots, in 13 days. And that is why every ocean-going ship since has used one of these. Strolling along these magnificent decks, I've got the sense of what it must have been like to be a luxury passenger heading across to New York. But one thing you notice very quickly on these decks is that as well as the funnel there for the, uh, the, the, the engine, there's also masts. This was a transitional vessel between uh, power and sail. So it was said that it was a steamship with auxiliary sail power. And that meant that if in the event of there being a following wind that they could harness, they put the sails up, turn the engine off, and were pushed across the Atlantic for free. So this is the steerage compartment, the cheapest way of getting around. It was added not for the Bristol, New York legs, but for the times when this ship used to carry passengers all the way to Australia. You'd be stuck in here with your neighbours for a long time. Look at these bunks. Let's see if I fit now these bunks. Okay. Uh, whoa. That is, that's pretty tight. <laughs> well, this would not be very comfortable for an 80 day voyage. Australia better be good. Well, in marked contrast to steerage, this is how the first class passengers ate their meals. Silver service, champagne glasses, fresh food. It's said that on the SS Great Britain, you would eat a higher quality of food than you would eat on land. Particularly the journeys were so short between Bristol and New York, you could actually take fresh provisions on board. And they did have livestock on deck as well, so you get fresh eggs and milk and things like that. And then when the meal had finished, you could push this chair back into this position, and then you could then enjoy poetry, music, and drama recitals here. What we're looking at here is a revolution in travel. Previously, trips across the Atlantic would only be undertaken if people absolutely have to. They, would, they were miserable, they were dangerous. Now, suddenly, we're entering the modern era, a world we recognize so well. Travel for recreation, travel for fun, travel for holidays. Now, the brilliant team at the SS Great Britain have allowed us right down here behind the scenes into the heart of the engine. And it is extraordinary being here, being dwarfed by this three-story iron and steel beast, cutting edge technology and driving this vast ship across the Atlantic at unprecedented speeds. And it's this engine 
that allows this ship to overcome the vagaries of weather, the weather that had restricted uh, all of the voyages across the Atlantic up to that point. Suddenly, the ship is able to sail on a regular timetable. It's dependable. This is the start of the modern world we're looking at here. Uh, and, and steam engines at this point were highly unusual. It was very difficult to get engineers to work on these things, to find the right people, let alone build one, pack it into a ship and sail it across the Atlantic. It needed feeding with coal. It used about a tonne of coal every four hours. Previously, everything that you could do to keep fire off a ship had been done. Now you're putting enormous <laughs> fires right in the heart of the ship, and you need men to feed those fires. So the coal was shoveled in to those furnaces there. Uh, it was between 40 and 60 degrees centigrade down here all the time. That's like operating the Sahara Desert. They were allowed six pints of water a day. That included them cooking and cleaning water as well, though. The only nod that they got, any special treatment, was that they were also given half a pint of rum to keep their spirits up. So that really adds the dehydration. Great. So this is great. From down here, you get a sense of what this poor old ship looked like when it was rescued from the Falkland Islands. It had been scuttled. It had been deliberately sunk and it had come to a rest on the seabed, hence some of the holes in the side of the hull here. It was literally a shipwreck when it was rescued and brought back and turned into this magnificent museum. And also down here, you get a clear indication of what Brunel was, was, was dealing with. Because this ship was longer than any ship ever before, and because it was made of metal, thus putting new and unknown strains on the hull, he had to work out a way in which the ship wouldn't break its own back to snap in half. And he did that by these, putting these box girders in here, right along the bottom of the ship from stem to stern. And he, he got these from building bridges. So what he's effectively doing is borrowing his knowledge from these other fields that he was working on and strengthened this ship, gave it rigidity by effectively building a massive bridge right along the bottom of the ship next to the keel. So this is the forecastle, the part of the ship right at the front, right next to the pointy end, the bows. And it was up here traditionally that the sailors would sleep. The officers might have slightly nicer accommodation, but sailors would be stuck up here right in the bows. Uh, and uh, this was a pretty tough place to be accommodated. You'd be uh, swinging on hammocks from these girders here, cheek by jowl, right in together. It'd be 130 members of the crew, so they were packed into here. And because it's right at the tip of the ship, if you think about the way it goes over the waves, you'd suffer for the most from the extraordinary motion. You'd be going through a huge angle up here, so you better not get seasick or you'd recover soon and you'd get used to it soon enough if you did. It's also very, very hot, not just all those other people sweating bodies damp from the, with the sea spray. Uh, it was also going through the tropics encased in iron like this. The temperatures were extraordinary. No, during that the, those parts of the voyage that the crew would be allowed to sling their hammocks up on deck. The epic climax of my trip on board SS Great Britain have arrived. The team have very kindly let me turn on the engine. So here goes. Just take that off and... There it goes. Wow. When you see it working, you just get a powerful sense of the, the engineering skill that allowed Brunel to send this ship powering across the Atlantic at hitherto unimaginable speeds and reliability. It's so big, the whole ship must have shaken with the effort of, uh, of this going round. Welcome to the History Hit YouTube channel, which we are relaunching. We've got all the best exclusive content going straight onto this History Hit YouTube channel. And you can find out, for example, why on earth I'm standing at the top of this mast. You should probably subscribe. <laughs>